Hey guys, it is Tuesday afternoon here in the Philippines and we are going to go ahead and do our premium unboxing for the week. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different than what I expected. I thought we were going to be doing a couple of Time Micro uh, Liberty Walk GTRs, but something happened with the shipping. One of them have, has gotten lost. I've received one. The other one has not arrived yet, so we're not going to do that this week. Maybe next week if they happen to find the one that got lost in the mail somewhere. It's supposedly in our city, but it has never been picked up for delivery. It just says it arrived there, and it's never been scanned since then. So hopefully they can find it. If not, maybe we'll order another one and do the video in the future. But today we're taking a look at the new Hot Wheels Fast and Furious set, the Fast Superstars. Wasn't really even planning on buying this set until I got back to the States, but I got a pretty good deal on it because the packages were slightly damaged. Um, so I got the, well, discount of damaged package. <laughs> so they're really not that bad, and since I opened them anyways for the video, it seemed to not really matter to me as long as the cars were mint. So we're going to be taking a look at all five of them. And there are a couple of new castings in this set, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of them I was really anticipating, which is the Nova. And then uh, we have a couple of repeats, but uh, they are cool repeats. So let's go ahead and start and do these in numerical order. So number one of the set is one of the repeats. This is your Nissan Skyline GTR BNR34. This is Brian's Blue R34. The last time this thing appeared was in just the regular Retro Entertainment series, way before the Fast and Furious uh, Premium series came about. You would just randomly get a Fast and Furious car inserted in the Retro Entertainment mixes, and this was one of them. Um, that car, I think, had the, like, Wontanabe style, like, 10-spoke wheels on it. And this one has a new style wheel on it. Same one that appeared on the white R34 in the Nissan GTR box set, which is pretty cool. This is one of the packages that was not damaged. Um, the blister's nice, and the card's pretty nice. And as you can see, Fast Superstars up here at the top. And... Number one of five. And then we'll flip him around here. And then this is the five cars in the set. The blue one from Fast and Furious. And then you have your orange Toyota GR Supra. The MK5, the A90, whatever you'd like to call it. Then you have your 70 Chevelle SS in gray primer. Which was the car that raced against this blue R34. Then you have the silver... 70 Chevy Nova that Letty drove in F9, and then you have your 70 Dodge Charger 4x4 that appeared in Fast and Furious 7. Uh, and then also the Orange Supra was in F9 Fast Saga. So, pretty cool lineup on this one. Um, I wish they wouldn't do so many repeats like the Chevelle they didn't really need to do again. Now, this R34, I do believe they needed to do again since we'd never seen it appear in the Fast and Furious premium lineup, only in the retro mix. So, kind of cool to see them put it into this mix. Really surprised they haven't done the maroon plum-colored Dodge Daytona yet. I'm really surprised we have not seen that one yet. Hopefully it will be coming soon. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and get this guy off the card and take a look at all the details and the differences between it and the first release. I don't have the first release here to give you an example or comparison of the differences, but basically it's just the wheels. Um, and as I said, this one is running the like 10 spoke new style wheels. And then the original one was running the eight spoke Wontanabe style wheels, which are a smaller diameter than these. I believe that was the wheel that it was running. Um, so, this car looks really good in this metallic blue, kind of similar to Bayside Blue, the original R34 color, just a couple shades darker, I believe. Nice detail on the tail light tampos, your Nissan emblem, your GTR emblem. So 
pretty nicely executed. And this one is also kind of an error. Don't know why, but on these, they had a hard time like hitting the tampos center. As you can see, the tampo is dropped on the tail lights on this one. Let's go ahead and zoom in instead of bringing him so close to the camera. See, especially on the left side over here, this has dropped way down, and you can see the Nissan badge is way below the circle. Uh, this side's not too bad. The third brake light is even dropped down below where the provision is for it. So they had some issues with that. I've seen even some that were as bad as like on the rear bumper. <laughs> so they missed the GTR emblem totally. The Nissan emblem was where the plate goes. The lights were across the rear bumper. So this one ain't as bad as those ones. So not too bad on the side stuff there. Uh, the front end, they nailed it though with the headlight tampos, GTR emblem in the grill, marker lights and all of that. The Nismo style hood. So really, really nicely done car. Except for the telelight tampos. And that's kind of an error misprint, I guess. So then again, it may make it worth more money someday. So that's number one in the set. Now moving along to number two, which is going to be the next repeat and the counterpart to racing the R34. So let's zoom, whoops, wrong way to zoom. So zooming back out. So here is your 70 Chevy Chevelle SS in gray primer. Um, the car was red with black stripes in the movie at first and they primered it up for the race, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen the movie so I can't remember how that played out. Then, as you see at the top, Fast Superstars, number two of five. And uh, this is the newer casting of the 70 Chevelle that they made for the Fast and Furious set. And actually, this was the first appearance of it, but back in the quarter mile muscle series. And it also appeared in red and black in that series. And this one was supposedly really hard to find of that five car set, but now, um, well, they released it again, so it's not going to be so hard to find for people. So flipping him around, it is also just stating Fast and Furious, 70 Chevelle SS, and then it shows you the other cars from the other movies and such. So let's go ahead and get this guy out and take a look at him. And this is a very nice casting. I would say it's pretty true to scale, maybe a hair too small but i really don't think so like well we'll get a green light 71 charger 71 chargers were boats so really not that much bigger than the chevelle so i'm gonna say this is pretty accurate to size and then the body lines and proportions are very accurate compared to the hot wheels first 70 chevelle their first 70 chevelle pretty much the same size but the proportions and body lines were a little more cartoonish and then the grill was part of the base and stuff so not so nicely detailed as this one is as you can see nicely done detailed grill detailed headlights and then you have your marker lights in the bumper like how they're doing the tampos well they have been doing this for over a year now maybe even a couple years now but where they're actually putting tampos on the base stuff that way um, it gives it that little more detail, whereas before, like since the rear bumper is part of the base, they may not have even had tail lights, but now they do, so that is really cool. They even did the black insert across the rear bumper. That's very nicely done. Chevelle emblem on the deck lid, another cool feature. They even did the detail of the silver on the door handle and door lock. Even though it's on gray primer, it's hard to see, but if you look really close, it's there. So a detail that they executed pretty nicely. The marker lights front and rear are done. They even added the side mirror, which in my opinion is okay, but it's just too bulky to look original because they were like a pedestal style mirror where it would have just had the small little pedestal mounted on the door. They did not mount flush in the corner like they're trying to 
do it in a way here, but they're also still trying to do the pedestal detail there. So I'm going to say it was nicely a nice attempt. And it's better than not having any mirror at all, I guess I could say. So not too bad. Detailed hood pins, metal on metal, as usual. And the same diameter wheel all the way around, which is something that I really dig about this one. Because the other Chevelle always had small diameter wheels in the front and big ones in the back. Which still, it's a cool casting. Don't get me wrong, I like it. But this one, I will say I favor a little more. So, that is number two. Moving to number three. Number three is a casting that's been out for a while, but the first time it's ever appeared in the retro, or, well, in the premium stuff. I shouldn't say retro entertainment, because this is no longer retro entertainment. It is its own premium series, and has been for, like, two years now. So, anyways, this is your Fast and Furious 69 Dodge Charger. Well, they're saying 70. I guess maybe it is a 70. 70 Dodge Charger 4x4 off-road so um very unique i will say and this is one of the ones where the blister is totally trashed as you can see the whole side of this blister is blowing out the blisters definitely are not like they used to be and i didn't even have to open this package so it's still then the card is actually mint but the blister is not so mint um and on the back of the card it shows you that this is from f7 furious 7 70 Dodge Charger, and it shows you the other four pieces. So, anyways, here he is, and I don't remember on the main line if it has that hatch there or not. It may have. It's been a while since I've seen the main line, but pretty cool to have this with rubber tires on it. I was a little disappointed, though, to find out that these are not rubber. They're just plastic, the spares. So, a uh, little disappointed on that. And then even, like, you can kind of see all the way through them. It's, like, transparent. There's, like, no will. But still, not bad. And you have your push bar. And I guess it is a 70. I can kind of see where they wanted to do the wraparound front bumper there. Um... But yeah, it kind of has a wide body flare like a Baja truck in the front fenders. So pretty cool to see this done in the premium line now. Heavy too with the metal base, metal body. And you have your push bar. No detail in the headlights though it doesn't look like. Um, maybe a little bit. Actually, I think it's part of the window bucket it looks like it looks like it's kind of that transparent plastic detailed tail lights though detailed dodge emblem which is cool so and you have your cage inside you can see through the roof hatch so pretty cool I finally have it in the premium that's why I'm saying we need to see a Daytona come up here pretty soon so, moving along to the two new castings. So, number four is the one that I was highly anticipating. And that is your 70 Chevy Nova in silver. Really dig this casting. They do have a second gen Nova already, a 68, which we've seen appear in the Grod series and even in the main line. Also, it appeared a couple times through RLC and convention stuff. And it's a pretty cool casting except the B-pillar. The B-pillar is part of the window bucket. So it almost looked like the car was a hard top. Where we all know the second gen Nova was a post car with the frame around the window on the door and things like that. So this is really cool to see that they have that post as part of the body. So that is really really nicely done and Carter it's pretty cool too and fast superstars number four of five flipping him around and as you can see it is F9 the fast saga 70 Chevy Nova SS with the other four cars there so let's get this guy out and get a look at him and this one also had a pretty decent card too um, so yeah, even though these were supposedly damaged packages, they were not really that bad at all. It's just that blowing out blister on the charger 
And then the Toyota has some issues too. I'll show you when we get to him next. So, this is pretty cool. It's got the louvered SS hood and black racing stripes. Uh, the louvers on the fender and then same diameter wheel all the way around. That is pretty cool. That's one thing that the other one, I don't think uh, it did on some, but some of them, they did have the same diameter. Then they actually had bigger tires in the back. The RLC selections, one they made, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, was really cool and dark blue, really nicely done, the 68. Uh, so nice detail on the rear tail panel, the tail lights, the SS badge is there, even the Nova emblem on the deck lid is there. So Hot Wheels is actually really doing a nice job with their tampos and stuff nowadays and the premium stuff. They got everything going on, emblems, marker lights, tail lights, everything. And the new castings that they're making, they're starting to try to get them a little more in proportion, true to scale. Because this, I'm going to say, is pretty accurate for scaling. Um, the Nova and the Chevelle were fairly close to the same size. Chevelle a little beefier, as you can see, it kind of does look a little beefier. The length is about the same. So a lot of their stuff nowadays is getting to be true 164 scale, which is pretty cool. Um, then you have your detailed grill and nicely done bumper. The bumpers are chrome. They're a separate piece. The interior, I think, is black, so I think there's some extra pieces there for the bumpers and such and the grill. So that's actually really nicely done because, as you can see, the bumpers are not part of the chassis. They're plastic. So a very nicely done casting. This is actually one that may make it in my fourth quarter final for a Hot Wheels muscle car because I think it is very well executed by Hot Wheels. really dig this Nova. So, hats off to Hot Wheels on that one. Really happy to get that one. And then, let's move these a little closer together. The last one and the last new casting is this Toyota GR Supra. Now, I haven't got my hands on the mainline one yet, but I've heard a lot of people saying the mainline one is based on the Pandem kit, which it may very well be. It may even be called the Pandem one. I don't follow mainline stuff too much nowadays. But this is definitely a stock GR Supra. As you can see, no wide body, nothing like that going on with it. But it does look very cool. And it does look like Han's uh, orange Supra from F9. Uh, I thought his was more of a gloss. This is more of like a fluorescent matte orange that is kind of almost like your utility marking paint that you'll see the utility companies using to mark your grass where the electrical lines and water lines are run so anyways let's flip him around look at it and then as you can see f9 the fast saga toyota gr supra with the other four from the set located there so let's get this guy out and oh yeah i was going to show you yeah this whole end of the blister is blowing out too it's gone I'm really surprised there's no like scratches or scuffs on the car, but there's not. It's still mint. Um, I know a few years back they were having some issues with the blisters like coming off the card, so they used those circle stickers that was like on JH1. Now people are complaining about the new plastic they're using that is kind of brittle, which I can see that. So I'm going to say if you guys don't store your stuff that you leave packaged in a climate controlled area that after a while the blisters will probably start decomposing and become very brittle and start cracking and breaking and turning yellow so luckily i'm an opener so i won't have to worry about that and plus all my stuff stays in a climate controlled environment anyways so let's get this guy off the card and look at him and if you see, I'm opening these with ease because, well, they were already open before we started the video. I kind of do that, especially if I'm going to put them back in the packages. Some of these I will not be keeping. I did want the Nova, so that's why I did buy this set. As I said, I was going to wait till I got back to the States to do that. But because it was a fairly decent deal comparing the four prices here... I went ahead and did it, bought it. So as you can see, it is definitely a matte orange. Nice detail with the mirrors built into the body. 
Uh, nice body lines and such. The tail lights are there, just in tampo form. The Toyota emblem's there. The Super emblem is there. Smoked windows. And this also has those newer style 10 spokes like the Skyline R34 is running. Nice headlight tampos and another Toyota tampo there. Metal on metal. So nice casting. Overall, really nice casting. Uh, so that is your fifth one. So kind of cool. Two new castings on the or in this set, and all a nice lineup, and two repeats. But only one of them is kind of a disappointment. The Chevelle, I love the Chevelle casting. It's just one, and the premium stuff was enough. But it's kind of cool to see that they brought back the R34 and put him into the premium line instead of having him as a straggler out in the retro set by himself. Because they already brought back the Charger with the blower, uh, the 70, so now they just need to bring back the SRT8 Challenger of Letty's. And then we'll have all of them in the set. Um... But anyways, guys, this is it for today's unboxing, this week's premium unboxing. Sorry, I cannot bring the Time Micro GTRs this week. So hopefully this will satisfy until I can get those both here. I'll go ahead and just give you a brief look. Here's the one that we were going to unbox. This is your red and black LBWK uh, Mini GT just opened their pre-order for this about a week ago. So... I'm going to get that one too, but it probably won't be here until I would say second quarter of 2022. But the other one that I have coming from Time Micro, like that one, is yellow and white racing number 23 to kind of simulate Liberty Walk's uh, wide body silhouette S15 drift car. So that's the one that they lost in the mail, mail unfortunately. So guys, I left an icon here on the left. For another Fast and Furious Hot Wheels Premium unboxing video, one of the older ones, so you guys can go check that out if you're into the FNF stuff. Then I left an icon here on the right for you to subscribe if you have not done so yet. And then I will talk to you guys uh, this weekend. And then Ethan just woke up and he wants to say hi. Here, Ethan, say hi. Hi. Here, we can't see you. Say hi. 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 Okay, now say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. We'll see you this weekend, and we'll do a showcase on something. Not sure what yet, but we'll showcase something. So thanks for watching, guys. See you this weekend.